Two self-radicalized Singaporean teenagers have been dealt with under the Internal Security Act. One is a 15-year-old student, the youngest to be detained for terrorism-related activities. Uh, both are also linked to an earlier case. Tan Se Hui with this report. Discord, a secure and anonymous online platform. This was where three teenagers came together to share their beliefs and support for terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Two teenagers, one aged 15 and the other 16, became acquainted to Erfan Daniel, the 18-year-old who was detained in December. Erfan had wanted to carry out armed violence here. The 15-year-old had similar plans. The authorities say that the teenager had considered carrying out knife attacks to behead non-Muslims in popular tourist areas. He also wanted to become a suicide bomber. All these ideas came about after consuming terrorist propaganda last year. The youth became deeply radicalized and started to idolize Al-Qaeda's founder Osama bin Laden and felt that the September 11 attacks on the US were justified. He also tried to radicalize his classmates and convince two foreigners to join him in his attack plans, but he was unsuccessful. Meanwhile, the 16-year-old student attracted authorities' attention three years ago when he consumed extremist content. Despite warnings, he continued to engage in ISIS-related discussions. He also joined online gaming platform Roblox, which replicated conflict zones. The youth uploaded this video a year ago, showing a player shooting and killing so-called ISIS enemies. He said it mimicked his desire to be a member of the terror group in real life, but he didn't have intentions to plan or conduct armed violence here or overseas. So he was issued a restriction order that places him under strict supervision. The families of both boys say they were unaware of their radical views. Most adults have no idea about things like Discord servers, Steam, you know, what, you, what is Roblox? What can you do with it? They have no idea. The thing is, they are moving a lot faster than the adults can possibly catch up. That is worrying, you know. So we really need to understand their world uh, to be able to help them better and to be aware of what they're getting exposed to. The youths will go through religious counselling as well as psychological and social rehabilitation. The 15-year-old is allowed regular family visits, while the 16-year-old has a mentor on cyber wellness. We also must remember the need for early intervention, because do remember, some of these youth can be saved. They could be just experimenting at the very early stages. And, and our, um, our intervention providers, they know this. Dr. Omar says spotting the signs early and engaging them in conversations will prevent more from falling prey to online harms. The total number of self-radicalised youths here stands at 11 since 2015. For more on the story, we speak to Dr. Muhammad Ali, co-chairman of the Religious Rehabilitation Group. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, how concerned are you that the younger of these two boys is just 15 years old? Uh, we are very concerned because at a very young age, uh, this boy has already posed uh, a security threat to the society and the country. Uh, and we have seen that in this particular case, he had considered to use uh, a knife to behead the non-Muslims uh, in popular tourist areas. And he has also thought of becoming a suicide bomber. And he became convinced that armed violence was permissible against what he, he believed as non or disbelievers. I'm also very concerned that the boy expressed support uh, for, for ISIS, for the Islamic State, and regarded the, the terrorist groups killing of the Shia Muslims and even the Yedis as being justified. And that uh, the group's support uh, uh, and his support terrorist groups such as ISIS and others that seek to uh, establish Islamic State uh, in Singapore uh, and even abroad. And the other thing is that, uh, that we are very concerned that if he is not detained and arrested, I mean, there is a high possibility that he will influence others, especially his peers 
and friends to join him and even commit violence in Singapore. Dr. Mohammed, the issue of radicalization is of great concern, but it doesn't happen overnight. It is a gradual process, and it likely would have been for this, these two boys as well. Uh, these young people might not even yeah. know what's happening to them uh, while, it, while they are online mm -hmm. or being groomed and so on. Why are youths particularly vulnerable to online radicalism? And uh, are there specific individuals who might be more prone? I think a few factors collide. First is the amount of time youth spend online. Pew Research on Teen Social Media and te Technology conducted last year states that 97% of teens use internet daily compared to 92% in 2014 and 2015. An IDA study in 20, 2012 stated that 97% of Singaporean youth aged between 15 and 25 engage actively in social network, network online and the age group most active on social media is between 19 to 29 years of age. And the second reason is that youth is the age, I think they are most negatively affected by the social media. And also there is a decrease or even lack of parental supervision and guidance online. And finally, I think uh, we do not uh, forget the, the, the increased uh, exposure that youth have today, I mean, to overseas development and global conflicts that, that impact, you know, a sense of injustice. And our young people today, they are most ill-equipped emotionally and rationally to, to manage and channel their anger, uh, resentment and, and, and unhappiness. Dr. Mohammed, uh, the younger of these boys, uh, we heard earlier in that report, uh, had a planned had considered carrying out knife attacks to behead non-Muslims in popular tourist areas. So this, uh, essentially, someone who's not of your faith, he thinks that he's somehow justified in carrying out a knife attack on them. So not something we can take for granted, and different faiths getting along together. Yeah. Uh, given, as you mentioned, this big exposure sure, to sure. online influences, international online influence, and lack of parental mm -hmm. supervision, what do you think can be done to... I wouldn't say ensure, but improve, uh, bolster trust between young people not from the same religious groups. I would like to believe that the local religious groups, by and large, have made progress to understand each other's beliefs, practices and cultures, to know that all religions inspire goodness and peace in their followers. And some of these efforts uh, include in the past uh, and even today the Harmony Circle, social studies in school uh, and exchange programs, and hopefully too the positive effects of the pandemic, for example, increased social cohesion in facing a common enemy are lasting. So I think trust is after all garnered through daily positive interactions, cooperation, uh, kindness and reliability. We must, however, be ever vigilant uh, against, you know, foreign influences that seek to divide us as a nation, as a, as a Singaporean nation. Uh, we learned this lesson during the riots in post, uh, post World War II Singapore, where foreign influences were the impetus to bring about racial and religious unrest in this country. Dr. Mohammed, as vigilant though as the community may have been, it's that number that is of concern, that seeming rise uh, in the number of radicalized youths here since 2015. I know the number that we see is, is 11. Uh, there may be speculation that perhaps there are even yeah. more, uh, but, but radicalism is often associated with Islam, but it, it isn't a phenomenon that's felt exclusively within the Muslim community, is it? Sure, yeah. I think we need to acknowledge that uh, uh, the profile of those being radicalized online, uh, it can vary. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, people from all uh, religious traditions, regardless of their religious backgrounds, uh, their age, gender, can be radicalized, because radicalization is uh, it can happen to anyone someone who starts to believe uh, or even support extreme views. And in some cases, 
then participates in, in terrorist groups or actions, and they can come from uh, any religious background. And it can also be motivated by, by a range of factors, including ideologies, religious beliefs, political beliefs, and prejudices against any particular groups uh, of people. So people may be radicalized in, in many different ways and, and over different time frames, from as little as few days or even few hours, and even it may take many years for individuals uh, to get radicalized. So it is important to acknowledge that uh, anyone can be, be radicalized. But of course, today, factors such as being easily influenced uh, and impressionable can make the young people, our children, uh, more particularly vulnerable and susceptible to extremist thoughts, ideas, and narratives. Oh, thank you, Dr. Muhammad. That was Dr. Muhammad Ali, the co-chairman of the Religious Rehabilitation Group.